everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we are gonna have some fun. Today we are gonna try to dye some yarn using some jelly beans. In my steam pan I started off with four cups of water and I am gonna add two tablespoons of white vinegar. Today we are going to dye 100 grams of Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn with this springtime candy. And I'm taking this 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon Yarn, and spreading it out in our steam pan. Now looking at this, I think that the water is a little lower than I might like. I sort of want something low immersion-ish, but I don't want to risk burning anything. So I'm going to go ahead and add two more cups of water. We're now a little bit out of the low immersion territory, but um, we need there to be enough of water for these, <laughs> these jelly beans to try to dissolve anyway. Um, I am currently on the stovetop over two burners, and I'm going to start heating things up. I decided to remove the white jelly beans from our list of pigmented friends. It's possible there's a tiny bit of food coloring in here, but it's really just not worth it. <laughs> but overall, I mean, that's, you know, a fraction of what we started with anyway. All right, we are heating up. Let's start adding hard jelly beans to the yarn. The colors that we are using today are food safe. We're using candy. But if you're a big Chemnitz fan, you might notice that I am using some dedicated dye equipment to add these jelly beans onto the yarn. And that is because I use the steam pan with non-food dyes, and so therefore um, I want to make sure that all the other equipment I'm using is also dedicated dye equipment so I don't mix food safe and non-food safe items. So I'm sort of randomly going through and I wanted to start with the black because honestly I was curious. Um, I believe I have a whole other bag of just the black ones somewhere but the black ones are made with a bunch of food coloring and yeah, I sort of wanted to get a little sense of them before going with the rest, but clearly there's plenty of food pouring there. And so now, let's just sprinkle on the rest of these colors. I do want to take a little bit of attention around where these ties are, but it does look like the colors are spreading out pretty reasonably. Oops. Now, I suppose I could have also arranged these into some kind of color gradient or something, but um, I just sort of wanted to go for it. I am a little concerned that I am only adding them onto the top, but at least with the blacks, it looks like that color is spreading out a fair amount, which means that we will be getting color um, along the yarn that's on the bottom of the pan as well. Uh, so that Make, whoops, <laughs> this is a loud one today. Goodness. Now, will we potentially see some black in places? Yeah. Or, now, will we potentially see some brown in places? Potentially. I've got green next to orange and purples next to orange, but I think we have the potential to get something that is colorful and bright and just a lot of fun. Whoops. <laughs> but I am sort of taking care. I don't mind if there's white left, but... cool. 
The reason for putting some on the edge is that that might let some color spread out a little more. Aha! With that green one, I see white. It looks like that the color on these jelly beans is only on the surface and it does not go all the way through to the interior. Mm -hmm. All right, but we definitely have some color starting to spread out. I am going to keep reducing the heat, but yeah, you can see that we've got sort of some white on there. And this one, oh yeah, those are starting to dissolve. If we had more than one skein of yarn in here and things were a little more crowded, then I think that we would definitely, ooh, look at that purple, um, we would definitely want to make sure that we had um, some along the bottom underneath the yarn as well. But I am hopeful that we will have some decent penetration of these colors sort of all the way through. But I am trying to give things a little bit of access. The place where, again, we've got the most concern is where these ties are located. Because that's where the yarn is the thickest. But... I think we've got some potential for something really, really spectacular. If I can get these sort of deep enough. All right, Rebecca, I am going to stop messing with this and I'm going to go ahead and let this sort of simmer lightly, let the candy sort of dissolve for five minutes and then we'll come back. After five minutes, the jelly beans are looking a bit paler. Um, ooh, they're feeling pretty soft in here too. There's still some good color. Ooh, look at that pink and blue. Oh, you can't even see that one. I just moved a purple one and there's some cool evidence of breaking. The water is looking relatively clear where I check. Oh, maybe we've got some blues here around this black, but um, ooh, that almost looks like there's some like weird coating or something. But not all of this is submerged. So I think I might add a little more water. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna add a little more vinegar since I am diluting things. Here's two cups of water with one tablespoon of vinegar. Now, that did cool everything off right then, so I'm going to kick up the heat again, but this should allow us to help everybody else submerge a little bit in here. I mean, not that they couldn't before, but I don't mind now if some of these other colors spread out a bit. Ooh, that red is beautiful. All right. And we do want all of this candy to dissolve. Um, <laughs> in a minute or two, I'm going to come and reduce the heat again. But I'm going to set a timer for 10 minutes, and then we'll come back and see how these jelly beans are doing. It has been 10 minutes, and most of the color is off of these jelly beans. I'm curious about the texture of these things, because... Hmm, it's not feeling that squishy. I'm not sure if these will dissolve. And I mean, there's no reason for me to add that back into the pan <laughs> since I'd removed it. Um, yeah, I'm thinking that, hmm, I think I'm gonna leave things, there's a little bit of blue in there. All right, I think I might leave things in here for 10 more minutes and then I'm gonna remove um, the yarn and try to pick off these jelly beans to see what we've got. I'm going to turn off the heat and use my tongs to try to pick up the yarn without as many of these jelly beans as I can. We'll see if we can get them to yeah, sort of just fall off. And whoa! Look at that! Okay, that is cool. And 
Honestly, the jelly beans came off a bit easier than I expected. Um, oh, this actually isn't that hot. Uh, there's a tiny bit of color left in there, but most of the color is in our yarn. And now I am transferring the yarn directly to a pan of warm water. And one of the reasons for going into warm water versus cool water um, is that, I mean, we're at in Superwash yarn, there's less of a felting risk, but I want, I don't want any like candy to harden. So I'm now sort of trying to scoop out the rest of these jelly beans. Oh goodness. But this is a, the water is warm, but it's at a temperature that I can manage a bit better. There are still some within the yarn, but they aren't sticking to it. They are coming off really, really easily, um, which is nice. If we let this cool, um, if the melty jelly beans started to say harden or something, then it would be really hard to remove it. Um, a lot of times when I do candy stuff, the candy will dissolve completely, but it is always important to go and check um, but wow, that was, I mean, there might be a handful left, but that was significantly easier than I expected to remove the candy. Thank goodness, I'm not ready to start washing it, but I am going to go replace this warm water, um, just because, you know, there's stuff in here, so why not? As for these jelly beans, I don't want to pour this down the drain, so I'm going to go through and grab them so I can throw them away. You know what? We may as well just start washing this. Um, I'm using warm water versus cool water, which is not what I typically do. See how there's like a little bit of candy there? We just want to make sure that the candy comes out. I do think that all of the jelly beans are out, but certainly candy did dissolve. Um, in this, um, in this dye dock. And so we want to get as much of the other stuff out of here as possible. I'm going to add some green dish soap. But what we'll see is we're, we'll see this water, this warm water, be a little translucent um, because there's like sugar and all kinds of other, who knows what else is in jelly beans all kinds of stuff in here, but the food coloring is staying in the yarn. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and wash this, I think a number of times. Um, I really wanna try to make sure everything comes out. Uh, and then uh, maybe like as I'm going, I will slowly reduce the temperature a little more, a little more, but I mean, that water is clear. Then I'm going to go hang the yarn up to dry, and we'll come back and take a closer look at it. Here is our finished dry base, which is gorgeous. We have the white base with these flecks of bright color. There was great color penetration through the skein. Unfortunately, I cannot recommend this technique. On the surface of this yarn, there is this sort of chalky, waxy residue that I just can't get off. I didn't even really notice it through the washing until I got and like started looking at the dry yarn and was trying to figure out how to remove this. Let me bring you to a close up. It can be hard to see the little bits of wax because I thought that most of them came out, but there are some still sort of stuck to the yarn. This is a huge, huge bummer on what was otherwise a really, really fun technique. Here is another spot where you can kind of see uh, that white residue that we have here. And for this reason, if I were to list this yarn in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy store, I would list it at a discount and disclose this in the item description. In the end, we created a stunning yarn with jelly beans. Unfortunately, I'm not going to recommend this technique. If you want to go for candy, double check that there is no wax in it. That's just sort of a big, big, big pain. 
I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you enjoyed this video and my willingness to explore and try things outside the box, check out the Chemnitz Patreon. Um, through this platform, you can subscribe, supporting the channel, but also you get to interact with me on another level, vote for content in new videos, and more. There are also some other really, really great perks. Thank you so much for watching.